How did Singapore become a regional powerhouse despite being only a small city-state with limited resources? The answer to that question is that they have one of the most sophisticated militaries in Southeast Asia. So, why do they put so much emphasis and money into their military, despite not having many traditional factors helping them out? That is what we will discuss in today's video. Hello and welcome to Business Phil. Let's delve into why Singapore invests heavily in its armed forces and how it stands as a global leader for other countries, considering such investments for themselves. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell for more amazing content. Singapore's military power. Singapore is a small island nation, very small, almost insignificant. Despite having fewer than 6 million residents and an area of only 280 square miles or 730 square kilometers, Singapore is a military power. Yes, you heard that correctly. We're talking about a first-rate military force that can compete with almost any country on the planet. Singapore has one of the best equipped armed forces in the world. Its armed forces, in particular, have just over 70,000 full-time professional personnel, 400,000 part-time personnel, and more than 1.2 million military-trained reservists, because, yes, all men in Singapore are required to serve in the military for two years. It's known as NS. As a result, the routinely armed forces, whether full-time or part-time, account for 8% of the country's total population. At the same time, the military-trained and available population accounts for nearly a quarter of the total population of this city-state. That is not all. This country is also home to a volunteer army referred to as the Singapore Armed Forces Volunteer Corps since 2015, which is open to women and allows membership up to the age of 45. Singapore's Technological Advantage There is probably no other nation on the planet where the population is so deeply engaged in the armed forces and we're only getting started. As you are probably aware, the number of readily available military men is not the most important factor in achieving victory in modern warfare. Beyond the number of troops, there is current tech and military equipment. As one of the world's richest nations, Singapore has also not skimped on this in recent decades. Singapore, for example, has more combat aircraft than the Air Force of Canada, Sweden, or even the Netherlands. They even outperform the air power of countries like Spain in terms of capacity. And we're talking about cutting-edge technology obtained from the military industries of the United States, Israel, as well as Europe. Singapore, in fact, was the first country in Southeast Asia to receive the fifth-generation F-35 fighter. As you might expect, the defense expenditure of this country is not small, especially given that it is a city-state. Military spending in 2022, this city's military spending will exceed $12.6 billion, nearly three times that of neighboring Malaysia and 25% more than that of Indonesia, a country with 46 times the population. To put this in context, we're talking about a budget comparable to that of a threatened territory like Taiwan. Isn't it incredible? Singapore is a prosperous country with a high level of legal security. It is one of the territories where the capital of millions of investors and businesses from all over the world ends up. And this is a status that must be protected. And based on the data, it appears that they are very straightforward about this. This modest Asian country has had significant military strategies that illustrate its perception of the world and have molded its relatively large and well-equipped military services over the years since gaining independence in 1965. How is Singapore building its military power? Singapore is attempting to build an impressive air force that is both strong and agile, capable of expecting any threat. To put it in a rather simple way, the objective is to attain total air supremacy in the region. The current Prime Minister, Li Shen Lung, has initiated an ambitious plan to adapt the entire military structure to this new mission in order to achieve this enormous power of response and anticipation. The replacement of the aging F-16 fleet with fifth-generation F-35Bs is one of the key elements of the new strategy, as is the renewal and advancement of the Navy fleet, 
which currently runs six multi-mission frigates based on the French Lafayette class. It also emphasizes the acquisition of key weapons, such as second-generation German Leopard tanks, indigenous hunter combat vehicles, which have been in service since 2019, and the American Lockheed Martin M142 HIMARS missile launcher, of which Singapore already has a dozen units. This is how Singapore has become a militarized city, then an unbreachable fortress, and now a military player capable of putting the maxim, the best defense can be a good offense, into practice. Though Singapore may be a small island state, its governing party views the military investment as integral to the country's survival. Rather than shying away from potential threats, Singapore has instead embraced militarization to safeguard itself and its citizens. What do you think about this approach? Is it a smart way for a small country to protect itself? Let us know in the comments. Also, if you liked the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.